All right, so this is it. This is the big one. If you've been watching the previous videos, this is what we've been laying groundwork for. If not, if you started here, that's just fine too. It's an excellent place to begin. We're going to be looking at the very first steps of data analysis, real and proper in R. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get some data loaded up into the R software. Now, the easiest way, of course, to the simplest way to get data in would be to type it by hand, uh, but that is massively inconvenient when you have large data sets, especially if they already exist in other formats, and so we read things in with R. There's a variety of read commands. Some of them are built in automatically. Others you have to go get. One of the most rudimentary, easiest to use is going to be read.csv, which we can see here we've got a variable std data, and we're going to assign it the value that is returned by the function read.csv, and we pass that read.csv function the argument chlamydia underscore 2011.csv. And before we take a look at the data in R, we're going to take a look at it in Excel because that's going to be more familiar to most of you. Here's that chlamydia 2011 file, and this is just some data on chlamydia incidence rates by state, and I got it from the CDC website at cdc.gov. We'll give you the URL so you can get it as well. We should have the file posted on the Google Drive so you can get access to it. So don't have a working Excel key. As we're going to see as the videos continue, I don't need one. I've got R. But let's just take a quick look at this data in a format that's going to be familiar to most folks. We've got four columns full of information. We've got the state's rank, the name of the state, number of cases of chlamydia they had, and the rate of chlamydia per 100,000 population. Looks like Alaska's in our first spot. So this thing goes down for 52 total rows. We've got 50 states, the U.S. total here, and we've got our you know variable names up here at the top. So pretty simple. Just wanted to make sure you guys were familiar with that before we dive in and take a look at it within R. But to look at it with an R, we're going to execute this command, std data gets read.csv, chlamydia underscore 2011.csv. And so how did that data read in? What is that? That's actually going to be something called a data frame. So we take a look. What class is it? Returns data.frame. That's the most common object for big tables when we load them into R. What they're going to come out at is a data frame, something where you'll spend a lot of time working with this particular type of object. So. Let's look at the first few rows. To look at the first few rows to get a picture of what's in here, uh, we can use the head command. Head will show you the first several entries in an object. So we run that head command. We can see we have the first six rows, and we have a column for each. So we can see that in order, the states with the highest incidence rates of chlamydia are Alaska, Mississippi, Louisiana, South Carolina, Alabama, and North Carolina. A lot of folks in the South, and then Alaska all out there by itself. So interesting stuff there. And that's it. We get a look at just the top of it. Head's very useful for looking at data frames, especially when you have many, many, many rows of information. If you want to just get a look at what it's shaped like or remember what the column names are, that's a good way to do it without looking at the whole thing all at once. Now, the next command we're going to look at is summary on that data. And what that will do is give you just some very basic statistics on what's in that data frame. And what summary actually returns is uh, a summary of the statistics within each column of a data frame. So if you were to run summary on the f first column of this data frame as if it were a vector by itself, it would return the same result. Uh, basically, you can see the, the minimum, maximum, mean, and median values are listed along with the first and third quartiles and the number of NA values that are listed within that column. That can be useful. A lot of functions with an R when you're doing more complicated types of analysis will throw you an error or have a problem if they run across NA values. So summary is a good way to scrub and check your data just to make sure when things come in that you don't have those or if you do that you're aware of them or prepared to deal with them. Let's take a look at the thing as a whole. Let's get a look at our STD data. All right, that'll see That'll print more than my console has room for. That'll be the case for most consoles. I can scroll up and down. You should be able to with whatever you're working on as well. And you can see all of the data set at once. Now, this is a relatively small table. It's only got those 52 rows we looked at, so it's easy to examine by eye. You're going to want to learn to subset to look at smaller parts of tables, especially when you have larger sets of data coming in. But that's a very brief look at how you get data into R, and oftentimes that's going to be half the battle. This is a pretty sanitized example I gave you here. Didn't throw a lot of problems. As we go through these videos, we'll introduce more complicated cases for data sources and how to get them within there to evaluate. But right now, that's all you need to know. Get a CSV. All you need to do is tell it to read, and you're ready to go. 
Again, this is Ed Jaros from My Bring Back. We're cranking out our videos with great alacrity, massive ardor, and a decent amount of enjoyment on our, on our end. So, if you would please keep with us, follow us on the YouTube, get with us on Google+, keep watching these videos. I promise you're going to learn something.